What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to check out Visual Hole from Fredo 6 which is a tool designed to help you quickly cut holes in objects inside of SketchUp. In addition we're also going to talk about how we can use Visual Hole in order to quickly add doors and windows to our models in SketchUp. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright so remember that Visual Hole is an extension for SketchUp that you can download from the Sketchication plugin store and I will link to that in the notes down below. And basically what it does is it allows you to select an object and use another object as a stencil for cutting holes. So let's say for example that I had this wall right here. Notice how when I mouse over this, this currently has a stencil. You can also create your own by clicking on the button for pick a stencil shape in the model. So in this case, let's say I wanted to use my Justin and Bonnie model right here. I could click on it. Well then notice how it gets created as a template that I can use in order to cut a hole. So if I click on my wall like this, it's going to cut a hole in my wall. Notice how you can also single click and then adjust the alignment by moving your mouse like this. And notice how it cuts a hole all the way through the wall, even though the wall has thickness. So this makes it an excellent tool for cutting holes in more complex type walls. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to make a video talking about how we might use this in order to improve our workflow for creating doors and windows inside of your model. So previously what we've done, right, is we would either block out a door opening, so maybe something like this. We would push pull our overall walls to whatever the height is going to be. And so a lot of the time what I would do is I would use the move tool in copy mode to copy this up seven feet and then push pull it the rest of the way in order to complete the opening. And I still think this is a valid part of a SketchUp workflow. So I definitely think you could do things like this. And so I'm not necessarily advocating replacing that workflow, but I am saying that we can test out another method using Visual Hole. And so what I would do is instead of drawing all those lines in, I would just use guides, right? And I would just block out um, locations where my walls would be. And I made this too big, but that's okay. We're just going to create some quick openings. And notice what I'm doing is I'm just blocking out where those openings might be using the tape measure tool to create guides. So let's say that we wanted maybe another door here. So let's say we wanted a front door here. That's fine. And then let's say we wanted some window openings on here too. So maybe something that's four foot wide here. Give it a four foot gap and then another window opening that's four foot wide here. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just using guides in order to block out where these might go. This is going to be important because we're going to use that as an intersection point with our stencil with Visual Hole. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to push pull my walls to whatever I want the height to be. So in this case I said 10 feet and so now what we have is we have 3D walls in here and we want to cut some openings. And so in order to do that we need a stencil that's going to be the size of our doors. So what I've done is I've just drawn a box that's three foot by seven foot. So you can see how this is three foot wide, seven foot tall. So now if I was to activate Visual Hole, first off, you want to make sure that you've selected the geometry that you want to cut through. In this situation, I'm actually going to put this all in a group right here. But when you first activate the tool, you need to select whatever you want to cut um, when you activate it. But what I can do is I can click in here and I can add the stencil. So I'm going to activate the tool and then there's an option here for pick a stencil shape in the model, right? Well, in this case, I want to pick this door right here. And one thing I might want to do before I do that is I might want to stand that up. So I'm just going to use the rotate tool to stand that up real quick. But then we're going to activate visual hole pick a stencil shape. Notice the first thing that you click on when you pick a stencil shape is going to set the base point of the stencil. In this case, I want that to be that lower left corner. Now, notice I have a stencil that's the size of my door opening. Well then, what I can do is I can just come in here and I can just click and then click again in order to cut my hole. So, what that's going to allow me to do really quickly is that's going to allow me to use this stencil in order to cut openings where my door should be inside a SketchUp. And so one thing to be aware of with this is sometimes if you're aligned with another opening like this one, you might have some issues getting this to create the opening. So there's a couple different things you could try. So you could start by jumping around to the back side of the wall and um, trying to add it that way. Now that can cause some issues if you're aligned with another hole too, um, because it's going to try to cut a hole 
um, in the line that the other hole has already been cut. You might try toggling off the recurse from top parent grouper component option like this. So I found that allows me to add those doors in here as well. So some of these you may have to play around with just a little bit, just due to the way that it finds the holes in SketchUp. And so what that's done is that's allowed us to quickly cut our openings. Well, another cool thing about this is if you were to create a component like this one for your door. So I've got a door in here with a um, with a set of casing in it. I've got a door frame. I've got a door swing, everything like that. If you set this up properly, you can quickly place doors in your model too. And so in this case, what I would wanna do is I wanna place my door based on this point right here. So what I would do is I would double click in here, make sure that my model axes are set to this point or my component axes are set to this point. Well then you could go find your door casing which because it exists inside of our model, we could go find it inside of the components section of our tray, use the in model section, then we can just click on it in order to place it. Well, notice how what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow me to quickly place doors that inference to these snap points right here. All right, so windows, windows are only slightly trickier, um, only because this doesn't wanna inference off of edges best as I can see. So probably what you would have to do is you would also have to add some guides in here for your windows like this, which I mean, it's not the end of the world for sure, especially since you'd only need them on one side here. You basically want an inference point. But what we would do is we would just draw um, a four foot by four foot face on here, move it off to the side. And remember you're creating a stencil for multiple windows is what you're doing. But what you would do is you would select your wall, pick your stencil right here, and then just click on these corner points right here. And you can see how this cuts holes in your walls really quickly. So you could use this in order to quickly add windows. And then I would just do the same thing with the window components that I did before. I just pre-make them and then be able to click in order to place them. So one thing I wish you could do, and maybe you can, but I don't know how, is I wish that when you pick a stencil, so like this one right here, I wish that you could set your base point off of the stencil. But you, you might be able to do that, but I don't know the way to do that. Um, that would be really nice because then if you could set your base point to like the ground, then you could just click right here and then your opening would be offset a little bit from where you click. So I don't know if there's a way to do that. I have not been able to find it. If anyone knows, let me know in the comments down below. All right, so big thanks to my supporters on Patreon for voting on this extension. Um, I will link to Visual in the notes down below. In addition, if you do want to learn how to use SketchUp, make sure you check out the SketchUp Essentials course. That's my detailed course showing you exactly step-by-step -step how to use SketchUp from start to finish. So if that's something you're interested in, I will link to that on this page as well. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about Visual Hole. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.